What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Fireside Giants. I'm your host, Anthony Rivardo, joined by my co-host, Alex Wilson, and we are now just nine days away from the 2024 NFL Draft. That's right. Guess who wore the number nine? J.J. McCarthy. We are McCarthy days away from the NFL Draft, and it just so happens to be who we're discussing in this episode is J.J. McCarthy. If you didn't know, Peter Schrager, long time on Good Morning Football with NFL Network, switched companies this offseason, but still one of the most plugged-in NFL insiders that there is guy doesn't really get much wrong every mock draft that he puts out he's got a great hit rate on predicting the picks in the draft and in his mock draft his first one of the offseason what did he have the New York Giants doing taking JJ McCarthy but not only drafting him trading up to the number four overall pick to draft JJ McCarthy and of course that's a controversial decision that's a move that would be met with a lot of support and a lot of criticism if it really happened in real life and that's what we want to discuss what if this does happen next week during the 2024 NFL draft what would our reaction be how do we feel about it do we think it would be a good move maybe what our critiques would be for it we're just going to go ahead and discuss this Peter Schrager predicted mock draft and really talk about the possibility of the New York Giants landing JJ McCarthy next week but before we dive into all that, make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this episode. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Ring the bell so you don't miss the episode. Comment your thoughts down below in the comment section. If you're listening to Apple or Spotify, please make sure to leave us a five-star review. Go ahead and follow us on all of our social media channels at Fireside Giants. And also, make sure to stay tuned to the channel. 20K subscriber special coming out this weekend. We can't wait to deliver that to you guys. And also, next week, tune in on the night of the NFL Draft live reaction and analysis on the channel. But without further ado, Alex, how are you doing today, my friend? And what is your reaction to this mock draft with the Giants? trading up to land J.J. McCarthy. Well, I'm doing pretty good. And look, guys, I think we've gone over this, and I'm so happy for it to be coming to an end in a couple days. But, you know, I wanted to go over this one because, Joe, you know, Peter Schrager has a long-standing relationship with Joe Shane. Um, so you tend to think maybe he has a little bit more insight into what he's thinking, where this team needs things, where the Giants are looking to allocate really big premium capital resources. Um, and Peter Schrager's probably the most plugged in of anybody because he knows Joe Shane. They're friends. If anyone's going to divulge information or give him a little bit of, it, of info to, to share with the, the media world, this would be the guy to do it. However, at the same time, you could argue this would be the perfect person to set a smoke screen because everyone's like, oh, well, he definitely knows what Joe Shane is thinking. You know, let's use that information and use that that kind of chemistry there to throw people off. So, you know, you could look at it both ways. Um, and when it comes to the Giants trading up to the fourth overall, in this instance, I believe they gave up a, a second-round pick next year and the third-round pick this year. So, you know, you, you kind of look at what the value you're giving up for. That's like nothing to me. Giving up next year's two and this year's three to move up two spots and – for what it's worth, the, Carol, uh, the, the Arizona Cardinals in this instance walk away with a top two receiver in this draft class. So like they're like, no sweat off our back, getting future draft capital and an extra pick this year, and we still land the player we wanted anyway. It, it's it's a great scenario for them. They don't have to move back out of the top three receiver realm. Um, they can stay right where they want to be, get extra draft capital for free, and get the same exact player, if not uh, 1A, 1B situation with Marvin Harrison Jr. and neighbors. So the question is, would you want to move up and get J.J. McCarthy? It's not really about moving up. It's about who you're getting. Now, my preference is I'd rather spend a little bit more or even a lot more to go up to three to get Drake May. That's my preference. But again, you just don't know if New England's going to want to move out. So that's kind of the big conversation here. Like, you can't guarantee it. That By the way, they're meeting this week with Michael Penix, J.J. McCarthy, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, everybody they're meeting this week. They're doing a gauntlet of, of quarterback evaluations. The consensus right now um, is that Jaden's going to go number two. Uh, to the commanders, and of course, Caleb number one to the Bears. But number three is open for the taking. Number three, nobody really knows what's going to happen here. And New England could say, well, you know, our roster just simply isn't good enough. In fact, I I kind of look at the Patriots and say they're in a similar, a, a slightly better spot financially than the Broncos. But you could argue that the Broncos roster is a little bit better than the than the Patriots. And the Broncos, if you ask their beat reporters, are like, we don't even want to draft a quarterback. Why? Because they're going to destroy any chance of developing a quarterback immediately because of how bad their roster is. The Patriots have a, a mediocre offensive line. Um, they have a decent defense with upside. They have no playmakers, basically not much of a running back situation. The receivers are horrible. Their tight ends are bad. You know, like, what do you, what do you really do there? Um, if they go with Drake May, they have to be confident they're going to be able to develop him. 
so, you know, if you're the Giants, you say to yourself, well, hey, Patriots, guess what? We're willing to give you our next year's first round pick and a third round pick this year to move up for three spots. You still walk away with a blue chip prospect. Maybe J.J. McCarthy is there at six anyway. You might be able to walk away with a, a player or you could double down, dra- uh, trade back again, end up with Michael Penix and a whole slew of, of, of uh, roster building capital. There's an argument to make that the Patriots are actually best. Their best case scenario would be to move back twice get stock up draft capital, add starting level players across the board, and then have more resources next year to go out and get the best quarterback available if they don't go quarterback this year or BPA in 2025 when they're probably going to have a bad record anyway. Um, and then they'll have a good draft pick and plus hours. And they're probably going to assume, well, the Giants are drafting a rookie quarterback. Hey, they're probably not going to be very good next year. That's the, the safe assumption for any team drafting a young quarterback is that they're probably not going to be great. Uh, but I do think right now, um, Anthony, that, this is a scenario where it's about the player, not the pick. What do you think about the idea of moving up to get J.J. McCarthy? I'm not the biggest J.J. fan. I think he's more of like a mid-round, first grade, first round grade, but because of the upside and the tools and the traits and the projection models, people think he could be great. But thinking and projecting is a lot different than actually seeing and witnessing. We just haven't seen and witnessed the high volume, but... When he's been called upon, he's shown up. And that's what a lot of people point toward is the sample size of work that we do have available and that he's made the plays. You know, you guys know my opinion. I'm more on the Drake Mayer, Jaden train. I'm not so much on the JJ train. I know you have a little bit of a different opinion. It's not that I have a different opinion on that necessarily because you're mentioning you're more on the Drake May, Jaden train. So am I. I would prefer those guys. But I just don't view the drop-off to be as significant as you do between those guys and J.J. McCarthy. Uh, Maybe between Drake May, but I actually kind of put it into tiers. I think we mentioned this on one of our live streams. Tune into those. We do those weekly on the channel. I mentioned that I think that Drake May is in one tier, and then in that next tier is Jaden Daniels and J.J. McCarthy. I view those guys pretty similarly, and I would be happy with either one this equal amount. Uh, and you're different. You prefer Jaden Daniels far more than you prefer J.J. McCarthy. I just prefer those guys about the same. I like Drake May more than both of them by a wide margin, however. If Drake May were to be available at number four and the Giants traded up for that, I view this as a home run. If they trade up to number four and they take J.J. McCarthy, I like it, but I do recognize that it's a risky move. And I think that J.J. McCarthy, listen, you want to talk tools and traits, you want to talk all that stuff, how about just being a pro-ready quarterback, played in a pro-style offense, step uh, drops back from under center, he knows how to play the game. He plays quarterback really well, but has he played it at a really high level before? You could argue that he has, you could argue that he hasn't, and that's where the risk comes from. This is a guy who hasn't been asked to lead a passing attack in the college level. Can he do it at the NFL level? That's the question mark, because he ran that Michigan offense, and he ran it well, and he was an excellent game manager who made plays. I'm not going to discount him. You guys know that I am high on J.J. McCarthy. He made a lot of plays, but for the most part, he just made a lot of good plays and didn't make many bad plays, and that usually classifies you as a game manager. There were some games where he only threw the ball six times. He only threw 18 passes in the national championship. They handed the ball off like 30 times in that game. Why weren't they throwing the ball 30 times and rushing six times? You know, why couldn't he have been the guy to lead that offense? And who's to say that he couldn't have been? They just had a lot of talent elsewhere in that backfield and on that offensive line. Maybe at the NFL level, he could be a better player than he was in college. Sometimes that happens. Other times it doesn't. It's really just about the right situation. And I think that's where you kind of need to sit down and say, are the New York Giants the right situation for J.J. McCarthy to reach his potential? Because you have to admit the potential is there. He's 21. He never loses games. I mean, if you look at his collegiate history, everything about it. He rarely loses football games and he plays at a very high level in pretty much every single one of those games. So is JJ McCarthy stepping into the right situation though? Because Michigan, that's a pretty great situation. You had an elite rushing attack to hand the ball off to. You had a great offensive line in front of you and a stifling defense on the other side of the ball. That was a perfect situation for JJ. Could the Giants be that? Their offensive line? Subpar, questionable, major question mark. They don't have any playmakers right now. The one big selling point here for the New York Giants and J.J. McCarthy to be a perfect marriage, Brian Dable. His ability to develop quarterbacks. And there are actually comparisons that you can draw between J.J. McCarthy and Josh Allen, the other superstar quarterback that Brian Dable developed. Josh Allen only had, I think, three games in his collegiate career where he threw for 300 or more yards. J.J. McCarthy only has two. Uh, Josh Allen also handed the ball off and ran the ball a lot himself, didn't really throw at a high volume or for a lot of yardage in most of his career games. J.J. McCarthy, same thing, didn't throw high volume passing attacks. 
But Josh Allen had the tools and the traits, and, and Brian Dable found a way to extrapolate on them and make him a better player than what he was in college. Could he do the same thing with J.J. McCarthy is the question. And the reason why, if the Giants were to trade up and make this pick, I would be okay with it is because I do believe Brian Dable's judgment. I think it's better than my own. I think it's better than all of ours. He has been in the NFL for a long time coaching quarterbacks. So if Brian Dable signs off on it, the Giants trade up, draft J.J. McCarthy, I'll sign off on it. I'll be like, okay, I see the vision and I believe in Brian Dable. Now, that's not to say that Brian Dable can just turn water to wine here and could just make anybody a superstar, but you do have to hope and believe that the Giants have the right head coach in place, and if he has his belief and he's ready to place it on J.J. McCarthy, put his job on the line basically for J.J. McCarthy, then I got to step behind them and say, hey, I'm, I'm okay with this, and I support the decision, and I will root for J.J. McCarthy. It's a little bit different from back in 2019, right? Because we hear this a lot, Alex. We hear a lot of the Giants are going to reach on a quarterback who's not that talented like they did with Daniel Jones back then. We've heard that before. But he was getting drafted by Dave Gettleman, Pat Shermer into a terrible roster. It's a little bit different for me than drafting J.J. McCarthy, who didn't play in the ACC for Duke, played and won a national championship for Michigan. That's a big difference to me. Beat some of the best teams in college um, and is drafted by Brian Dable and Joe Shane. I think there's a big difference between that. I don't think it's similar to when the Giants drafted Daniel Jones at number six. And just because he's the fourth quarterback taken in this draft class doesn't mean he's going to be the fourth best. How often do we see the fourth quarterback taken become the best, right? It's happened before. It's not that rare. How about Lamar Jackson going 32nd overall in that draft class? How about Josh Allen being the third quarterback off the board in that draft class? Sometimes the best player is not drafted first. Maybe they're drafted last. Brock Purdy. There are definitely examples that you can look to, and I don't think that you just have to say, hey, because he's drafted here, he's not going to be as good as these other guys. The potential is there, and it's really about getting drafted into the right situation. And again, that brings me back to the Giants situation. You love what you have with Brian Dable. However, with McCarthy, who does have a relative lack of experience to these other quarterbacks, leading a high-flying passing attack, you do have to feel... A little bit uneasy about the fact that the Giants don't have a playmaker. They don't have an elite game-changing playmaker and don't have a great offensive line to put in front of J.J. McCarthy. How well does he adjust at the next level? I think that you could argue, if you want to talk situations, and McCarthy goes to the Minnesota Vikings throwing the Justin Jefferson, having Kevin O'Connell coaching him, great offensive line. Like, that's a perfect situation, but that's the question mark for the Giants. Can they build the right situation around J.J. McCarthy that allows Brian Dable to extrapolate on his talent and help him reach his potential? That's really, like, my full take on the J.J. McCarthy decision, whether or not the Giants draft him. I will support it, and I do believe in it, and I do think you can make an argument that he is a top-10 talent in in this draft class, he makes some great throws. Turn on the tape against Michigan State University and watch the throws that he was making in that game. He looked like an NFL quarterback. But then you could turn on the Penn State game, watch that tape, and you'll see somebody who was really rattled by pressure and did not play at even a backup quarterback level in the NFL. So it's a wide range. It's a wide spectrum of games that you can look at with J.J. McCarthy. Maybe you fall in love with his tape. Maybe you are in disgust with his tape. It's really tough to tell. But Alex, how do you feel about that kind of conversation that I was making where um, it's really about the situation? And maybe the Giants do. Maybe they don't have the best situation for him. I think you could argue it uh, in kind of both ways. So how do you feel about that uh, situation, of course, being what might ultimately determine whether or not a process prospect pans out in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I honestly don't think that the Giants are a really bad situation for a rookie quarterback at all. And the reason being is they, they just invested a, a, a ton of uh, resources into their offensive line over the last two or three years. And apologies for these sirens. I feel like every episode there is something going on. Someone's doing something crazy. There's a fire everywhere. Um, but, you know, uh, and the weather gets nice. Everyone freaks out for some reason. But looking at this giant situation Think about the last four years. We've allocated a first, two first round, two top ten picks actually on offensive tackles. We've allocated a second round pick on John Michael Schmitz. We've allocated multiple mid round selections on depth pieces. We've allocated financial resources now towards the offensive line, ten million dollars per season towards John Runyon, and another seven million towards Jermaine Illuminor. I think the offensive line is going to take a big step forward. In fact, they don't have a choice. If they do, it's once again we're talking about 
are, are we going to fire our head coach and GM? Are we going to fire them? Because, like, our offensive line, again, they can't piece it together. John Meyer is going to be losing his mind if they don't have a better performance this year. Um, he already said it was embarrassing. Joe Shane called it embarrassing. You can't even run a play when your quarterback's on their butt every single play. So that's paramount to me. Um, I think they are going to take a big step forward. With that being said, offensive line performance is probably one of the most important variables to developing a young quarterback. Why? Because you can eliminate a lot of bad habits they immediately would get would get otherwise. Think about Daniel Jones, um, rush decision making, having to leave the pocket, you know, happy feet, turnover prone. All of those were a result of bad offensive line performance, and it just compounded from there. So. Yes, I think that this is not going to be as bad of a situation. Also, we have some decent playmakers. I think, you know, you look at Wandale Robinson. If, if Darren Waller doesn't retire, you know, you look at Jalen Hyatt. You know, you look at Darius Slayton, some decent players. And that's just the start, right? You, hopefully, you still have our second-round pick we can use on a Keon Coleman or a Ricky Pearsall or a Xavier Leggett. Like, there's, there are going to be players at 47, maybe even move up to the top of the second round and, you know, try to get a better player there. Like, maybe that's something the Giants would consider doing. Um, so with that being said, this is not just about 2024. This is about 2025 and beyond um, because you're, you have more time. You have more resources. You have more capital. So if you move up to four and you only give up a two next year and a three this year and you maintain your 2025 first-round pick, you have a premium selection to go get the best receiver in the draft class next year or spend your second overall second-round pick this year on it um, and you have opportunity. You have flexibility. So, yeah, there's a lot of benefits to drafting a quarterback. Our roster is exponentially better than the Panthers roster, in my opinion. We have linchpin pieces on the offensive line. We have linchpin pieces on defense. Um, we, have, we have tons of youth. We may have the young, one of the youngest rosters in the, in the league right now after this upcoming draft class, not to mention you know a, a lot of financial freedom after Daniel Jones is uh, gone. So I kind of feel as though this team is in a pretty good spot to spend, pretty good spot um, in terms of draft capital. You take, the, you take the risk, you take the gamble, you be aggressive now because you can, but other years you may not be so lucky, you may not be so fortunate. Think about two years ago. If the Giants wanted a quarterback, it would have been impossible, um, mainly because... You know, we were drafting poorly. Our coaching was horrible. Our offensive line was going nowhere. Our defense was spotty. Now at least we have some sort of, like, foundation. You got Andrew Thomas, Brian Burns, Dexter Lawrence, Deontay Banks. You know, you have some really good pieces on this team. It's time to build on top of them. Are we really going to waste it? Are we going to waste it away and and, and stop building? Um, this team is young. Dexter Lawrence is young. Kayvon Thibodeau is 22 years old. You have years, five, six years of, of, of uh, sample size right now. Think about it like this. Jalen Hurts is just entering his contract, right? He's just starting to get into his contract. These younger quarterbacks, Patrick Mahomes just hitting his contract, Josh Allen just hitting his contract. Now those teams are going to be strapped at trying to improve their rosters because of that financial hit they're going to take. It is in the Giants' best interest right now to reset that rookie window. They have all these great players locked down on contracts. They'll have more financial freedom in the future. If it means drafting J.J. McCarthy, it's not my preference, but I think I still support it because you have to do it. You have to. Like, I know it's taking a risk, but the risk reward of not taking the quarterback is exponentially worse than, than if, if, you, if you pass on it. You know what I mean? Like, look, this is the perfect example. Everyone says, if you draft Malik Neighbors or Marvin Harrison Jr., who's throwing him the ball? You know, the Jets are... Every year, one of the worst teams in football. Why? They don't have a freaking quarterback, right? Now they do with Aaron Rodgers coming back. You want to see what an elite defense and an elite Garrett Wilson does for you when you don't have a quarterback? Zero. No playoffs. Nothing. Failure. Why Why do people think Malik Neighbors is going to turn this team into a superstar caliber offense that's going to be high octane and, and championship winning? It's it's complete BS. It's, it's a facade that people convince themselves because they don't like the quarterback. You have to take the risk. I don't want J.J. McCarthy at, at four. That's not my preference. I wish we could get Drake May, but you have to take the gamble because going and getting Malik Neighbors or Romo Dunze and Marvin Harrison Jr. doesn't win you a Super Bowl. You still have to figure out the quarterback position. And the draft class next year is weak. The free agency class is weak. We don't know what the future looks like there and all, and all of our linchpin pieces are just getting older so yeah I support taking JJ McCarthy at four because I don't see another way out you know I don't see another alternative and I'm willing to take the shot on Brian Dable not JJ McCarthy let me get let me say that one more time I'm willing to take the chance that Brian Dable could develop a, a quarterback with great traits then just investing my my logic and my persona into drafting J.J. McCarthy. It's not about McCarthy for me. It's about the fact that we hire Brian Dable to coach a, a quarterback, to 
maximize talents. That is why he is here. If we're not going to let him do that, what are we doing? We're just waiting for them to get fired. You know what I mean? Because Daniel Jones isn't returning from an ACL tear and leading us to a Super Bowl. It's not happening. If he makes it to the playoffs, it still doesn't matter because he's not going to beat Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. He's not going to beat Josh Allen. He's not going to beat these better quarterbacks. He's not going to beat Lamar Jackson in the playoffs. Like, he's, it's not going to happen. We got wiped by the Philadelphia Eagles two years ago. Uh, it, it's just, I, I don't see how how we walk away with it, without a quarterback in this draft class. The only alternative I'll say, Anthony, is this. If the Giants end up getting neighbors or Marvin Harrison Jr. and, like, get somehow luck into Michael Penix in the second round or trade back into the first round, the top end of the first round, I could get behind it. But I still don't think taking a gamble on a second-round quarterback is great practice. I think it's bad practice, in fact. Um... So with that being said, I'm willing to take the shot on J.J. McCarthy because in my eyes, it's the only way out of this mess. It's the only way out of, you know, awful financial situation. It's the only way out of being strapped by Daniel Jones' contract. Um, I don't see another option, personally. If I did, I would let you guys know. I would tell you right here. But I, I, I'm going to reinforce this and say I want Drake May. I want Jaden Daniels, if possible. But the last resort being J.J. McCarthy – it sucks. I don't like it. It's not my preference, but I'm willing to bet on Brian Dable. That's what I'll say. I think that's a fair take to say that you're going to bet on Brian Dable in that regard. I just personally like J.J. McCarthy. I'm willing to bet on him. I really am. I think that there's a lot to his game, and I really encourage fans who don't see that to dive a little bit deeper. Maybe watch some film breakdowns. Those are usually good at showing you the pros and the cons. You know, dive deeper and take a look at his All-22 film, the throws that he made on a down-to-down basis, not just the highlights, right? I think that there's a lot to like with J.J. McCarthy if you really do dive into him deeper and maybe take a look at advanced stats and analytics that point and say, Hey, this guy really did play like a pro during his time with Michigan. But I also do agree with you. You got to bet on Brian Dable here. I I mean, listen, this is his team. This is his show. If this is what he wants to do, you got to sign off on it. And if he crashes and burns from this, all right, well, then the Giants are probably going to have a top 10 pick next year anyway. They'll probably draft a new quarterback and just trade J.J. McCarthy like the Arizona Cardinals did after they drafted Josh Rosen. Crash and burned after a year, traded him away, drafted Kyler Murray, moved on. They have a franchise quarterback. So, You got to keep that in mind. This is one decision that the Giants can make. It doesn't have to set them back years and years if they are proactive about it and they cut loose with the guy sooner rather than later. One thing that I will say, if the Giants were to draft J.J. McCarthy, you already know what would happen, right? The NFL media is going to make a big joke out of it. They're going to make fun of the Giants. We've seen this story before, but you also have to keep in mind that did happen with the Buffalo Bills when they drafted Josh Allen. There were a lot of critics of that pick. That was not a favorable pick in the moment. It's kind of tough because the hindsight's always 2020. Looks like it was a home run selection now. At the time, yeah, but best believe that there were tons of outlets that were criticizing the Bills and saying you took the third or fourth or fifth best quarterback in the draft class. Josh Allen was not the right selection. He was. He was the right selection uh, in that draft, and the Bills hit that one out of the park. And I think that Joe Shane mentioned that recently in an interview uh, and said, hey, when we drafted Josh Allen, it was not something that was met with open arms, but we made it work, and he ended up being a superstar. Maybe J.J. McCarthy is the same thing. you got to keep your mind open to that possibility. And hey, maybe he is Zach Wilson 2.0. Maybe he does become a bust within two years. Totally possible, but you got to take the risk. I agree with those points that you made there, Alex. Got to take the risk and bet on Brian Dable and hope that he gets this one right. Because if he doesn't, what are the Giants going to do financially? You can't really continue with Daniel Jones on this contract without having some sort of a backup plan. And why would you want to have a backup plan on a second tier, like third rate quarterback from the second, third, fourth round? If you want to take like a Rattler in round three, why would you want that to be your backup plan as opposed to this kid, J.J. McCarthy, who there are a lot of people in the draft uh, or in the league that view him as a top 10 prospect. If that's the case, that's a much better backup plan than a Spencer Rattler for the Daniel Jones situation. And hey, listen, like you said, in this trade that Peter Schrager projected, they kept their second round pick. That second round pick could be maybe Adonai Mitchell. Who knows? Maybe Lad McConkey falls that far. Could be Xavier Leggett, who you guys know I'm a huge fan of. Giants could get their playmaker in round two. If you look at the hit rate on round two wide receivers, It's very high. A lot of great wide receivers have come out of the second round in recent seasons. Just go ahead, look at the draft history, and you'll find a ton of talent from that second round. So the Giants want to get a playmaker, drafted J.J. McCarthy at six or at four and trading up a couple spots for him. It doesn't prevent them from getting a playmaker. But trading up to three for Drake May, which again, the option that I favor, 
However, if they do that, they're probably not going to be able to land a playmaker in the second round because I doubt they're keeping their second round pick if they move up to three. It's a lot cheaper to move up to four and take the number four quarterback in the draft than it is to move up to three and take the Drake May if that's who is probably going to be on the board at that selection. But then again, it just comes down to who do the Giants like more? Who does Brian Dable favor? Does he prefer Drake May? Does he prefer J.J. McCarthy? Does he prefer them about the same? Does he think they're on the same level? If that's the case... Why would you trade up more to get a guy that you think is the same talent level as another guy? So it's just going to be a nuanced conversation that's going to happen in the draft room uh, for the New York Giants. And we won't be in there. Man, what I would do to be a fly on the wall. But afterwards, when we get all that footage, the behind the scenes footage that the Giants have, if they do make that trade and they show some of that footage, that's going to be really fun stuff to watch. It's going to be really exciting. And that's why I love the NFL draft so much. So random, so intense, so many conversations, so much controversy. This is like the best event. Uh, you know, it's one of the best events in the NFL. And again, we're only nine days, McCarthy days away, and I'm really excited for that. Uh, so I, again, my take on it, I think J.J. McCarthy is worthy of the selection just because I really value taking a chance on a quarterback on a rookie contract. Uh, again, I don't think that he is a top 10 talent, but I could see the top 10 upside. So I'm willing to take the chance on it marrying him with Brian Dable and hoping that they could strike gold once again like they did with Josh Allen, which I, I do recognize is easier said than done. Uh, but ultimately, I think it would be a solid selection. If the Giants don't do that, they stick a pick at six and take Malik Neighbors. Guys, I'm going to be excited about that too. And uh, if, if J.J. McCarthy is a bust, you guys can all tell me I told you so, and I will take it on the chin. I'm willing to bet that he's going to be a good player, though. I really do think that. Uh, but Alex, any closing thoughts on the potential J.J. McCarthy trade, uh, really Peter Schrager making this mock trade? I think, again, that's really notable that it was Schrager making this mock. We've heard this now. I'll actually give you the rundown before I hand it back to you, Alex. We heard Schrager now say that he thinks that J.J. McCarthy is the guy that they would trade up for. We've heard Connor Hughes of SNY say that there's buzz around the league that J.J. McCarthy is the guy that the Giants like. And Ryan Dunley of the New York Post earlier this week said his source to belief is that the Giants are targeting J.J. McCarthy. So a lot of traction there. I think we've heard this rumor more than we've heard the others. But then again... We have heard a lot of rumors. We have heard that they love Drake May. We have heard that they love Jane Daniels. It's smokescreen season, right, Alex? Certainly is. And you know what? <laughs> let me let me play devil's advocate here and say maybe maybe the Giants want everyone to think that they're super high on J.J. McCarthy because of how great Brian, Brian Dable is. He's known across the league, like players, coaches. They all think that he's a quarterback guru. And if they think that he thinks J.J. McCarthy is the guy – Maybe he'll go a little bit higher than people expect. Maybe that the Giants are trying to push the JJ minute narrative because they're trying to get a guy like Drake May to fall. Maybe they're trying to get the Patriots to think like maybe you gotta think twice. Um, you know, New England, think about their offense. Think about where Gerard Mayo's coming from in a Bilichick system. And they they love quarterbacks who just do all the fine details extremely well. The nitty gritties, the the everything, the small things, they do it perfectly. That's JJ McCarthy. Drake May's a little bit different. He's a gunslinger. He wants to get the ball out, and he wants to take risks. That's what Brian Dable loves. You know what I mean? That's what he loved in Josh Allen. So why would he not love that, especially the dual threread? I'm not saying that J.J. isn't athletic, but, you know, uh, May had, what, almost 600 rushing yards and nine touchdowns last year on the ground. You know, you're talking about a different element here. I think that the Giants, if there's a situation where they have to give up more to move up to three and New England's willing to pull the trigger, maybe they will, you know? How about this? What if the Giants moved up to four and then decided that they wanted to move? Then the, the Patriots were split decision on May and JJ McCarthy, and the Giants were like, hey, we'll move up and give you draft capital just to get our just get the guy that we want. You know what I mean? That way they still get their quarterback if they have a split decision and they get some more draft capital. You never know. The Giants are going to be aggressive, man. I could feel. I feel Joe Shane is working something, man. We already just heard today. Um, Albert Breer told you know ESPN Jordan Ronan that uh, the Giants have inquired about moving up. I mean, come on, like. They've literally asked about it. I, I knew they were going to do it anyway. They were going to see what it was going to take. Like, we knew this is, this is nothing, like, mind-blowing. But the fact that they did indicates that they are legitimately considering a quarterback, which I think is gener is generally known. That's, you know, nothing uh, surprising. But, you know, sitting here right now, and, and I think that Joe Shane's got, some, got some, something on his sleeve, man. The guy works like the Gene Lasagna, you know, <laughs> from, pull from Lil Wayne. So I kind of feel like we're going to see something crazy here. I think this is going to be a really exciting draft. 
Are we going to be happy? Hopefully. Are we going to be upset? Probably. Um, are we going to be feuding? Absolutely. No matter who the Giants take, how much draft capital we give up, shit is going to be talked. And I think it's going to. that's the best part of it, man. We, we're here to watch sports. We're here to have fun. Um, I love you guys. Love your opinions. This is why we do it. It's all fun and games. At the end of the day, it's just football. Um, so we appreciate everyone's feedback and conversation as always. 100%. And what you're saying there, going back and forth, feuding, debating, that's what I can't wait for that upcoming draft live stream for. I mean, if the Giants make a pick that I don't like, I'll let them I'll know. I'll rip into it. Maybe you and I will go back and forth. Maybe you like the pick. Hey, I can tell you one thing, though. If they draft an offensive tackle at number six, I think both you and I are going to be really upset uh, and letting it fly on that stream. But, hey, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, guys, definitely stay tuned and tune in to that live stream. Tune in to the 20K sub special that's coming out this upcoming weekend. We're going to start promoting it this week, and we're going to let you know what it's going to entail. And trust me, guys, it's exciting. A lot of special guests on the docket. I think you're going to have a lot of fun with it and really enjoy what we have cooking up here. And we're really excited to deliver that to you guys. And also stay tuned for that live stream because we're going to be hyped in that draft room on on draft night in that live stream. We're going to be having a lot of fun with you guys uh, and really just can't wait to see you all turn out for that one. But that pretty much wraps this one up. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this episode. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Ring the bell so you don't miss the episode. And comment your thoughts down below in the comment section. If you're listening to Apple or Spotify, please make sure to leave us a five-star review. Go ahead and follow us on all of our social media channels at Fireside Giants. Without further ado, we'll catch you on the next one. Have a good one, and let's go Giants.